Class of 2021, congratulations. Very proud. This is a major, major accomplishment. Could not be more proud of you. I just have one piece of advice. Remember to take care of the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves. Hey, congratulations, Class of 2021. You've uh, made it this far. You've overcome a lot of challenges, including COVID-19. And I uh, just want to know that we at Compass here believe in you. And uh, we wish you God's blessing on your uh, next steps, your career, your family, your relationship with him. And uh, congrats again. And uh, we'll be looking for your name in the credits. Congratulations, graduates of 2021. I'm so proud of all of the work that you've done to get this far and achieve your degree from Compass College. May God bless you richly in the years to come as you take your next steps on your life journey. Again, congratulations. Yay! All right, congratulations, seniors. You've done it. You've made it to the end, which is really just the beginning of all of it for you. Um, but most of all, I want to thank you for nominating me and making me the instructor of the year, five years running now. Even though I've only been here two years, I do appreciate it. Uh, but in all seriousness, congratulations. You've worked very hard to get here. And all the industry right now is really kind of different and changing. I want you to remember that every day is an adventure, all right? It's okay to feel anxious and concerned about it, but if you change your mindset to be about adventure, you'll never have a day where you're bored, all right? So again, congratulations and best wishes. God bless. Hi seniors, I just wanted to tell you congratulations. We're really happy for you finishing up at Compass for all the time you took. And we're looking forward to seeing where you're going to go in the future. We hope you have a great commencement time and a great time with your family. God bless. Seriously, seniors, I don't know how you did it. I'm not asking questions, uh, but you did it. Somehow, you graduated. Good luck with that one. Um, no, seriously, you guys are great. I'm going to miss each and every one of you. Uh, I love my time working with you, not only as, in, as your thesis advisor, but also in other classes I've had with you. You're going to do great when you graduate. Congratulations, you're done. Good job. I just want to say congratulations. This is getting your degree is one of the it's one of the monuments in life. It's one of those moments, and I can't tell you how honestly honored I am to have been a part of this journey with you. Thank you so much for doing this here and with us. I wish you all the best of luck in this. I wish you all of the greatness. If you ever need us, don't forget we're here for you. Congratulations. Hello seniors, it's been a very long journey and I'm so excited to see what you guys do in your future careers. And I just wanna offer you a big congratulations. Hello class of 2021, uh, congratulations. I would like to uh, uh, tell you a quote uh, by, from Nelson Mandela. Um, and that quote is that there is no passion to be found in playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one that you're capable of. Um, that's an important quote uh, because the amount of courage that it takes to follow one's passion um, and defy society's conventional wisdom to travel the road less traveled. It takes courage, fortitude, and conviction. Um, learning to exercise those things and follow them like you did to choose to even come to film school is more important than anything you can learn in a classroom. Because courage, fortitude, and passion is what, what creates character. And character is what opens doors. So whether you go on to make movies, uh, web series, TV shows, commercials, Always do it with that character and that passion um, because that's how you live a life that you're capable of living. So congratulations. Um, your script has yet to be written and I wish you the best of luck as you go out and write it. Congratulations, class of 2021. You made it through your senior year in the weirdest year in history um, and I'm sure it's only made you all the much stronger. I know you're gonna do incredible things out there in the world and I can't wait to see what you all accomplish. Congratulations again. Hi everybody, I just wanna say congratulations on graduating, that is amazing, you did it, woo! I wish you all the best and I hope you have a wonderful graduation. Congratulations, class of 2021, you've done it. 
You've completed your degree at Compass College and are ready to take on the world. I pray that you'll experience many great things in the days, months, and years ahead. And I want to thank you for all your hard work and effort and pray that you are successful. Congrats. Hey guys, thrilled for you, so excited that you're graduating. I remember you guys when you were fresh-faced, young freshmen at Compass, and now look at you, you're heading out into the world, you're graduates, you're accomplished filmmakers, and I know you're gonna knock them dead out there in the world. I'm so excited for you, I'm so excited to see what you do, uh, what you create, and please know, if you ever need anything, you've got friends here at Compass uh, who will have your back. Go out there and make beautiful things, tell beautiful stories. Well, you're graduating, woohoo, because now you're gonna leave, I'm not gonna see you again, and I'm super sad. But I'm also super excited because you're graduating and you're gonna go out and have an amazing career and make lots of amazing movies. So, well done, class of 2021, for real, woohoo. Congratulations, class of 2021. All your hard work has paid off. It was such a pleasure working with each and every one of you. You faced so many different and difficult obstacles and you succeeded and you should be very proud of yourself. You will never be alone on your journey. With hard work, perseverance, you will succeed. Good luck on your endeavor. It's a wrap. Compass College of Cinematic Arts is excited to welcome you to today's 2021 commencement. I'm Jay Greer, the president of Compass, and we thank you for joining us today to celebrate the work and accomplishments of this year's senior class who've met the requirements to achieve a Bachelor's of Fine Arts degree. Compass has worked hard to make this virtual commencement special for you, for our seniors, families, and friends. I wanna thank Aaron Greer, Chuck Kuhn, and the Compass faculty and staff for producing this event. Today's celebration is gonna include a keynote address from a very successful Compass friend, number two, an award presentation recognizing our student accomplishments. Students will then receive their degrees up on stage. We'll have a tassel celebration and a closing video of the class of 2021. The 2021 senior thesis film will be available after the commencement for you to take a look at. I would now like to invite Jack Brown, Compass's Career Services and Spiritual Development Coordinator, to open this commencement in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the journey that has brought us to this day. And for each and every one of these students who have now reached a milestone in their lives. Lord, we look to the past and we thank you for all those who helped inspire them to this point, for parents and friends and teachers, for everyone who built into their lives with wisdom, compassion, and belief. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we also look to the future and for all the doors yet to open, for all the opportunities yet to present themselves, for all those coming first steps into a larger world, Lord, we ask that you would guide them, protect them, and remind them always that they are greatly loved by the one who knows them best of all. And Lord, now we look to this present day and we ask that you would help these students appreciate and celebrate this accomplishment, that this day and all those to come would be filled with joy even as we navigate difficult waters. Lord, we ask that you would be their hope and their stay. And we offer all these things to you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's now our privilege to introduce to you John Gruders. John's a uniquely gifted storyteller John is a sought-after screenwriter and director in the world of the faith-based documentary and filmmaking. His award-winning productions have inspired millions of people throughout the world, and they've been shown in theaters, museums, festivals, trade shows, conferences, and on broadcast TV. His productions include feature films, documentaries, teaching series, and commercials. 
In addition to his original work, John has partnered with some of the world's leading playwrights, theologians, and scientists, translating their work for popular consumption. He travels globally, and his voracious appetite for the Word of God has afforded him a unique understanding of the context and culture of biblical teachings. John's current project is Sabina, Tortured for Christ, The Nazi Years. It's scheduled for release in November of 2021. His company, Gruder's Production, is based in Holland, Michigan, which he leads with his wife, Judy, who is the producer behind the films. People can create successful visual storytelling careers in Michigan, and John's proven it. John's a member of the Compass Professional Advisory Board and a person whose early career was actually impacted by Compass. Now we welcome John Gruders, who's speaking from Ireland, where he's filming a music video. Hi, I'm John Gruders, and uh, it's a real honor to be asked to speak to you at this year virtual commencement for the Compass College of Cinematic Arts. I don't want to waste your time. I just have three challenges for you today and a prayer. That's it. The challenges are going to be competence, initiative, and humility. So let's talk about competence. That's the first one. Well, how do I define competence? It doesn't have much to do with maybe how you did on the test or, or even what your grades necessarily were. But how well can you do that job or that position compared to the veterans who've been doing it for, for years, even decades? And how are you going to learn how the veterans do it if you don't get a chance to watch them or work side by side with men and women who have become excellent in this field? It's very important to take what you've learned through books, through your own experience, through your professors, get this chance to work side by side with, with other people and watch how competent they are. I've had to continually do this myself. One of the positions on a film set that I've had maybe the hardest time fulfilling well is the position of the first AD, the first assistant director. For a long time, I didn't even know how to assess the applicants for that position because I hadn't worked side by side with enough competent first ADs. I hired one on a film we did a few years ago in Michigan called The Frontier Boys. And when he came to set, he admitted to me that he hadn't even read the script yet, much less looked at the blocking plots or the storyboards, hadn't even read the script. Well, we fired him right then and there. That, that just was a bad start. Uh, uh, conversely, this past September, we were shooting the end of a new film we're working on. And we had shot in January and February in the country of Romania. COVID shut us down in May, but we had a, a brief window in September. We could go back and shoot the springtime scenes. The first AD that I had worked with in the first two months uh, was, a, I don't want to criticize too pers pers specifically, but we weren't going to bring him back, put it that way. So I meet this new woman, her name is Irina, and we're in the car, it's a long drive to where we're going for our first scout. And the technical team is coming, it's what we call the tech recce. I've been there, I've blocked it all out, I've done storyboards, I've done uh, previs visuals, I've written the script, everything's there. And Irina says to me in the car, how would you like to proceed when we get on to the location? I said, well, how do you normally do it, Irina? She says, well, normally I go out there and I explain to all the department directors the context of the script, the lines and the coverage, what's going on in the blocking, and how you've kind of arranged everything. And then I asked the director to add any comments. I thought she was bluffing. I, I had not worked with the first AD who came with that much preparation. But we got to the location, I let her do it. She knew my shot designer plots as well as I did. She knew the script as well as I did. She could do it all off the top of her head. We had a fantastic 12 days of shooting with Irina because she was so competent at what she did. And if you don't learn from people like that, if, if generational leadership doesn't pass it on, then the, the younger generation might have a lot of skill, have a lot of talent, but there's, there's something missing. It's like the baton has been dropped. Irina had learned from someone that she said was so demanding, she went home and cried night after night because she couldn't get it right. But that, that mentorship paid off and who became the best first AD I've ever worked with. But if you don't do that, it reminds me of the Americans in the Olympics back in 2008 in Beijing, China. It was the first time that the Americans never finished on the podium for any of their relay teams, and it was because they dropped the baton. It led to losing. But it's not only on set that competency matters. It's kind of the whole, the whole thing. 
I'm sure they've taught you at Compass this simple mantra, don't be late. Well, it's really critical that, that that's a real thing because no one's ever made that so clear to me as a set. The set, the production schedule is not gonna wait for you. It shouldn't wait for you. It can't afford to wait for you. It's too expensive. You can't be late to a film set. You can't be late to your call time. You can't be late to your driving car. You can't be late if you're going on an airplane. It's a decision that I urge you to make for yourself, not just to hear me or a professor say. Say to yourself, I will never ever be late. In fact, say it right now. Repeat after me. I will never ever be late. I can't hear you, but I'm assuming that you just said it. It's strong advice. And it leads me now to my second challenge, and the challenge is initiative. I've had a lot of people who have worked at our company or who have been on a set who have said, well, that's not my job description. Or, well, I wasn't asked to do that. Okay, that's a fair excuse because it's possible it wasn't their job description. And there are limits to you stepping outside of your lane, I recognize. But usually I'm looking for within that lane. And even though that might be a fair excuse, I'll tell you there are other people who will run right past that line of thinking and find ways to show initiative and make things better, to plus it up. There's so many examples of people that I can think of that do that and it just, it makes you so happy to work together. It really impresses me. I can tell you there was an example. The art director is one position that shows a lot of initiative typically. The art director or the production designer, it's, it's really what they do. I give them a broad vision of, of a script and a storyline and they take it and they run with it. And when it comes together, it's a beautiful thing. I remember walking onto the set. We were shooting in a Russian army barracks. The scene was set in the 1940s. And I had designed where the bunk's gonna be in the room and where the, you know, the treasure chests and the desks were, all that. But when I walked in and saw the room for the first time with my own eyes, I realized what a beautiful project the art team has done. And I went to one of the desks and I picked up a stack. They decided to put correspondence letters on their desks. And the, it's written in Russian, and I looked at the stamp, and they're all stamped 1944. That kind of attention to detail, that's taking initiative. And it, it's the, from the top of the production schedule to the bottom, from the top of the call sheet to the bottom, from the first name in the credits to the last name, there's initiative that can be taken, and it will be noticed. We shot a film 10 years ago. I used a lot of Compass students on it. And I remember when we finished the film, we had a debriefing meeting. Who, who noticed who? What positions really stood out? What can we learn? What did we do well? What did we do not so well? There was one woman who was kind of the last hire, kind of just a PA, really bottom of the totem pole position, but everybody noticed that she was sweeping up. She was cleaning dishes. She was first to arrive, last to leave. She brought uh, encouragement and a smile. And we hired her. We hired her to our company. She worked for five years. It was a very good hire. And it was all based on her showing that kind of initiative. And that leads me to my, my final word, and it's the word humility. And humility, it's a little bit harder to define, and it may not come naturally for you, or for me, or for any of us, but it's something we can cultivate. And I'm not talking about false humility. It's not that you can't have a personality. It's not that you can't be an extrovert, or have a sense of humor, or have a loud voice. But a sense of humility can be cultivated. I mean, the first step for me is humility before God. And when I do that right, I literally remember to take the time to pray every day and devote that day to the Lord and ask for his assistance and guidance and presence in how I treat people and in how my spirit reacts to whatever the day brings and how to treat my wife and my crew members or even the very scenes, to be humble before God before you enter a scene. That's the first step. But it's also true with our interpersonal relationships. No one likes to work with a know-it-all, and no one likes to work with someone who belittles others. And too often, the sense of competence gives people a sense of permission to feel authoritarian or belittle others. And I don't really think it's any good, even for the person with a competency. Because the best work is usually found in collaboration. And the long-term teams that work the best together are found in mutual respect. So learning to be humble before your fellow crew members or before your fellow actors. I think those are the three challenges. The challenges of being competent, of initiative, taking initiative, and being humble. Now you might wonder where I'm sitting. I haven't told you yet, but I'm in Northern Ireland along the coast 
and we're on a film trip here. We're filming uh, Keith and Kristen Getty singing a song uh, to close out the movie, Sabina, Tortured for Christ, the Nazi Years. We've already completed all the filming we shot in Romania, and we're up here to Northern Ireland to do kind of a, a music video at the closing of, of the movie, under the credits, more or less. And so we've been up and down this coastline scouting for the last week, and we've come across this incredible spot. This is Dunluce Castle, and it's it's impressive. It's a medieval castle that sits right on this massive cliff. I can't imagine how they built it. And I was taught that C.S. Lewis came here and sat right in this field and looked at Dunluce Castle back, back in the 40s or 50s. And he was working on his series of novels called The Chronicles of Narnia. And this castle inspired him to the vision of a place he called Care Paravel, which was the capital of Narnia. And so I'm thinking of C.S. Lewis, and it reminded me of the conversation I had with Jay Greer a few months back, and this is my prayer for you. And my prayer is that you build your life on a solid rock foundation, and you build your faith, if you're a person of faith, on a foundation. Jesus said the man who builds his house on the rock <coughs> withstands the storms. The man who builds his house on the sand, the storms blow the house away. How do you do that? How do you build your faith on something solid enough that it can withstand the culture that's attacking it, uh, the many arguments that want to belittle it, and the storms of life that will come along. I think you have to have a defense for the faith. You have to have an, what they call an apologetic. That doesn't mean an apology, it means, it means a reasoning. So Mere Christianity by the C.S. Lewis is the kind of book that affected my life. It helped me move from sand to rock. I would recommend that this summer you find the time to read C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity. And a second book I recommended to Jay for all Compass students is another book that describes the journey of a man's you know, journey from, from atheism to faith, and that is The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. It's a more modern book. Lee was a journalist at the Chicago Tribune. It will help you put your faith on rock solid ground. And then finally, one that was very influential to me and I'd highly recommend is a book called The Answers Book by Ken Ham. Those three books are the kind of books that can move your faith from Santa Rock. And it's helped me with my marriage. It's helped me with the films we've produced. It's helped me with the company we've built. And it's just helped me have a sense of peace in my life. So that's my three challenges for you. Again, be competent at your job. Learn from the veterans. Take initiative. Don't just wait to be told what to do. Learn how to take initiative. It'll be noticed. And develop humility in your life. Work on it. It might not be easy. And I pray that you find a way to build your life on the solid rock of the, of the faith in Jesus Christ. Thanks for this chance. All the best. God bless you. Thank you, John, for sharing your insights with our students and their families. Now we want to share this year's Senior Class Awards. It's my pleasure to introduce Compass's Dean of Education, William Kavan. Thank you, Jay. It is an honor and a pleasure to be able to talk about these awards. These awards are an incredibly important part of the Compass community and what we strive for here. This is the accumulation of what these students have been doing their entire journey at Compass. It's a validation of their integrity, their work ethic, and what they mean to our community. These awards were voted upon by the students themselves and the faculty. You can't get better than that. If you didn't win one of the awards, know that we thought about you and you were in the running. It's an extreme honor to be a part of this. Hi, I'm Joshua Cortade. I'm a faculty member here at Compass College and I have been ever since the days when we shot things on tape. Uh, I'm here to present the President's Award. The President's Award is given to a senior who demonstrates professionalism, people skills, work ethic, and integrity that strongly represent Compass College. The award is based on recommendations from the faculty, staff, and management of Compass College. And I am proud to present this year's President's Award to Emily Kaminsky. Well deserved. Congratulations, Emily.
Hello, my name is Tom Phillips. I'm a faculty member here at Compass College of Cinematic Arts, and I'm also this year's senior thesis advisor. Today, I'm going to present the award for the Community Builder Award. This is a student voted award given to the student who fosters collaboration in the classroom and on set. I am happy to award this year's Community Builder Award to Evan Brown. Congratulations, Evan. Hello, my name is Anthony Griffin, and I'm a faculty instructor here at Compass College of Cinematic Arts. It's my pleasure today to introduce the Leadership Award. It's an award voted on by the faculty and staff uh, and awarded to the student for making a lasting impact here at the Compass College community uh, by consistently exemplifying outstanding leadership. It is my pleasure to present this award to Ms. McKenna Booz. Congratulations, Ms. McKenna. Fantastic work. We're pleased to announce the 2021's Salutatorian Award, who had the second highest GPA in the 2021 class. Please join me in congratulating Emily Kaminsky. Now we're pleased to announce 2021's Valedictorian Award, who had the highest GPA in the class of 2021. It's my honor and my privilege to welcome to the stage 2021's valedictorian, McKenna Booz. Hello, it's so nice to not see everyone today. For those of you who know me and those of you who don't, I am not an expert speech giver. I'm sure a few of you could count the no total number of words I've said to you on one hand, and I've been here for three years. So with that being said, I'm going to do what all filmmakers do best and quote some great movies. So wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Good evening, Compass. Allow me first to apologize for this interruption. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility of repetition. I enjoy them as much as any bloke. But in the spirit of commemoration, thereby those important events of the past that usually associated with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle or a celebration of a nice holiday, I thought I would mark this, May the 8th, a day that is sadly no longer remembered, by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. Now my mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You remember those posters that said, today is the first day of the rest of your life? Well, that's true of every day but one, the day that you die. Because life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Now you'll have bad times, but it'll always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. Because nobody is gonna hit as hard as life, but it ain't how hard you can hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's how much you can take and keep moving forward. Because if you focus on what you left behind, you'll never be able to see what lies ahead. So just keep swimming. Because you've got this. Most of the time, the challenges you face are those you were already built to handle. And sometimes, it is the people who no one imagines everything of who do the things that no one can imagine. So no matter what anybody tells you, Words and ideas can change the world. Because everything that is or was began with a dream. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can change the world and rewrite all the rules. So there should be no boundaries to human endeavor. We are all different. How bad life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. Because great men are not born great. They grow great. But it's OK to be a little scared. In order to be brave, you've got to be a little scared. Because with great power comes great responsibility. And sometimes the right path is not the easy one. We must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. But it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. And oh yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Because the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. 
And sometimes life is like this tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but if you keep moving, you will come to a better place. Because the night is darkest before dawn. And I promise you, the dawn is coming. So in this life, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody but yourself. And after what you've gone through, if you haven't done that by now, it ain't never gonna happen. So you cannot live your life to please others. The choice must be yours. And you mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. So you're gonna need a bigger boat. Because the flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. And nobody ever made a difference by being like everybody else. Remember, you can shine no matter what you're made of. And don't let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Because the only person standing in your way is you. So get busy living or get busy dying. Because do or do not, there is no try. And you have to get lost before you can find yourself. But remember, where we're going, we don't need roads. To infinity and beyond. Because adventure is out there. So, carpe diem. Seize the day, boys. Make your lives extraordinary. Thank you, class of 2021, and congratulations. We did it. Thank you, McKenna. Now, we're going to distribute the diplomas. Christina Burgess, the Compass Librarian, will be reading the names of our seniors. My name is Christina Burgess, and I'm the librarian here at Compass College of Cinematic Arts. Today, it is my distinct honor to announce the names of the following students upon whom Compass College bestows a Bachelor's of Fine Arts. Congratulations to the following. McKenna Boos, Valdivictorian Summa Cum Laude. Evan Brown. Anthony Burrell, magna cum laude. Miles Ferguson, magna cum laude. Emily Kaminsky, salutatorian, magna cum laude. Brian Keeler, magna cum laude. Austin Kemp, cum laude. Adriana Martinez. Hunter McDowell, honors. Daniel Rodriguez. Christian Sanders. Congratulations, class of 2021. This last year, we've been very blessed to have hosted a dozen studio executives, directors, screenwriters, actors, distributors, and streaming service producers to speak to our students via Zoom about how they progress in their careers, what they look for in hiring staff, and how do they walk out their faith in this industry. I wanna close by reminding you of four key criteria the professionals consistently shared with us that are relevant to your career people skills, integrity, work ethic, and servant leadership. People skills mean being able to work with a group of people who are gifted differently than you from a variety of diverse backgrounds. This is very common in the film and media industry. Number two is integrity. Say what you do, do what you say. It's not a sin to make a mistake. It is a sin to make a mistake and not ask for help. Number three is work ethic being one of the first people there and the last people to leave, that tells the management they can rely on you. And finally, servant leadership. There are challenges and problems on every production that we have to solve. It doesn't matter what your role is on the production. The key is, are you willing to help the team solve the problem? Exercising these four qualities show that you are different and that you're walking out your faith and your character and not just talking about it. 
It's now time to celebrate your graduation. At this point in time, please move your tassels from the right to the left side. Now a word of benediction from the book of Jude. Now to the one who can keep you upright and plant you firmly in his presence, clean, unmarked, and joyful in the light of his glory, to the one and only God our Savior, through Jesus the anointed our Lord, be glory and greatness and might and authority, just as it has been since before he created time. May it continue now and into eternity. Amen. Congratulations. We want to welcome you to the Compass Alumni Community, a community of filmmakers and media people that share your passion, work ethic, and experience. Even more importantly, you're taking the next step on the path of those who set out before you, and soon you'll be a beacon to the students to follow you by participating on the Compass Alumni Facebook and emails, you will get the access to job and project opportunities that come to Compass. Please reach out to Jack Brown about participating in the alumni community. To close, we want to take a look back at your time at Compass and celebrate the experiences you've all shared. Congratulations, Class of 2021.